Uh, yes. And, and Kathleen is having a shower for oh, obvious Kathleen. reasons. <laughs> Och det här är alltså Seppo som är producent här på teatern så han kommer också ikväll att vara tolk om det behövs. So very very welcome to Dramaten and this uh, shocking play I'm still shivering about it. I, I, it was uh, 30 years maybe ago since I read it and I never saw it on stage so I just really want to thank you on behalf of everyone I think for, for magnificent performance. And um, uh, to the audience, Thomas Ostermeyer is the artistic director and leader for the Schaubühne in Berlin since 1999. And that's when you also opened with Personkrets, right? That was the first... That, that, was, that was the opening yeah. of the new Schaubühne. Itself. Yeah, that we heard about in Marmor Fajan before. Maybe you all heard Magnus Florin talk about theater. Yes. And, and now we are, of course, extremely proud that you once again chose a Norian play. Uh, as you said, we are really screwed up people in this country. That has this, uh, uh, this is the, like, um, uh, the temperature of, of our uh, uh, mind, or whatever you call it. But also you have been doing some groundbreaking um, performances of, with the Doll's House where you had Noura shooting her husband in the end instead of leaving her. So for the audience to know this is uh, not just... Yeah, we also did a lot of changes in this play. I guess you did, because yeah. um, this, 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 it's set in the, for, in the 80s, and it's like 40 years ago. So what, uh, first of all, I just want to know what, what um, attracted you to this play today? Um, to be honest, uh, as it is a Bergman festival, I can tell you, I what, was thinking about doing scenes from a marriage. Mm -hmm. And then I approached it and been reading the play and the two versions, the television series version and the movie version and the play. And then I, I remembered the demons and then I was, I, thought maybe Demons is, is a more uh, violent play and more uh, close to what I experience. No, uh, close to what uh, is more to, to my feeling about, about uh, relationships. And so I decided to, to do this one. Yeah, doesn't we, we, we can all recognize ourselves in this. In bits and parts. It's, um, <laughs> this is how marriages are today, aren't they? <laughs> so, but, but also, it, it, it required that you had changed the text uh, for, for some, uh, I mean, yeah, the some movies that they went to see, different Yeah, of course, the, the movies, mean, the movies are different. Uh, the, the beginning with the uh, Godard movie mm -hmm. is not in, in the play. I find it quite nice. Mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, Fritz Lang uh, telling this Hölderlin poem, which is also about, um, yeah, this absence of, of God and then the demons. So I thought there's a beautiful connection and um, also, yeah, I, I love this uh, this movie actually, Le Mépris, and it's also kind of homage because I was also thinking of putting Le Mépris on stage, mm -hmm. and as I didn't do it, I wanted to have it as a short moment in the beginning um, of the play <coughs> on stage. And it's a beautiful idea, this whole movie of Europe, and how Europe has its roots in, in, in Greek mythology, and how we are kind of um, corrupted by American cultural industry and this this fight and this uh, reflecting all, uh, also reflected in, in, in the relationships also a movie about man and woman and her realizing that he's a traitor that he sells his ideas of art to cultural industry and yeah, and the, but the, the biggest change we did is is in the ending. 
I'm, I'm, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty sad that Lars didn't come today, Lars Moraine, but as, as you know, he's, uh, he's having difficulties to go to theater. And, um, but when I had this idea of putting demons on stage, I, I, we met in Paris and I told him about what I want to change in the play. And it was pretty interesting to say, oh, I don't really remember what it's about. Um, <laughs> Yes, this is the play, okay. Mm -hmm. And then there was there's one thing which for me is pretty important that in the in the play they are talking about a lot of okay, Frank is so fucked up that he can't have sex anymore without somebody else watching or with strangers or asking uh, her Katharina to go out in nightclubs and, and, and have some some man and bring them home and he watches and um, pretends to be the, the older brother. And this was for me pretty um, striking as, as, as an, a subject. And so we decided to have this ending, which is not in the play, where they try to have sex, Katharina and, and the neighbor, mm. and him watching this, so that you kind of have a view on the play that you can say, okay, this was all set up by the two mm -hmm. to have him to have sex with her and him watching. So it's a kind of a nice twist, yeah. I think. And uh, and Lars agreed a lot and said, yeah, it's, it's even better. Than the <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and so. Because you leave it a little open in the end there with that, them looking at yeah, each other. Yeah, I don't really know if you, who knows the play really well, but there's, there's a long scene where uh, Frank and Jena, they come back <coughs> in the apartment when he leaves and, yeah. and she leaves with him. They do come back and then there's a long scene with candles on stage and, and them falling in love and kind of strangely romantic and surrealistic with a ship on the bookshelf which suddenly starts to burn in the scene. <laughs> and, and at the end of the play he is nailing himself as Jesus on the wall. So that's different to our end. <laughs> <ending. laughs> <laughs> a completely remake, I'll say. <laughs> but also you, you, you I heard you talking before that with the, I just jumped before we start talking about the acting and the, when you start working with the actors, uh, about the set designer. And um, can you tell us a little about, a little about this, um, the way you work? Because you all, you, you, you Well, it, it's, first of all, it's, it's Nina Wetzel who designed it. I think she's the yeah. Oh, there. <laughs> And also to be mentioned, Sebastian, who did the video, who is all alone in this role over there. Oh, thank you. And I've, I've been working a lot with the revolving stages, and we decided to have one more time this, and but then it became very difficult how the interior should look like because with every single furniture, piece of furniture you put on stage you immediately have a class or a taste which you recognize or a fashion or a group of people and uh, I'm pretty happy that Nina kind of hit the point but not too explicit so that it's not um, only this group of people mm. and it's beautiful chair. Yeah, you have that, that is, uh... <laughs> and, and what is, what is uh, very important, and what, what was for me very important are these two doors, but th this is again, this is playing a lot with the Godard movie, with Le Mepri, I don't know if you know this, when they shot it in the apartment, it's a lot about Brigitte Bardot going from one room to another, and it's always framed. So every single action of her is framed, and the camera follows her. So I want to have these frames here, so that you have this 
somebody is all of a sudden appearing and then disappearing and, and so on. And also, because we have this religious thing in the, in the play uh, about demons or the absence of, of God, so... That is what the, the, the film is talking about in the, in the beginning, so... so yes, yes, and so we try to have kind of a, an, an altar as a kind of a playing with this cross where he is nailed in the, in the original version. So we have a little cross if you want. Yes, you yeah. And we have this altar thing, this three images, you know, this triptych mm. with the video the left and the right, and then in the middle the, the true um, image. So that's the reason for the <laughs> it, it Extremely, extremely <laughs> effective. Um, I but, never explained this, and I shouldn't. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, it's very curious to, to, to hear about these things. Uh, and uh, to, to come now to the work, I'm so curious. How, when, when you, you, do you, do you prepare all the blockings and things like that for the actors before when you have the, the when the, the model of the design is that design is you done or, or do you improvise? What how is the way you work with, if we, for this specific play? If the actors weren't there, I would say, no, I never do blockings, but I cannot lie because they are here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is blockings? Yeah. Arrangieren. Where, where you oh. walk and sit and stand, huh? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> what is your preparation to, to start with? Mm, I think I have the problem that maybe the, the actors disagree, or they should say, I'm, I have more the problem to be too prepared. I, I, most of the time I'm sitting down there and try to shut my mouth. So you are like very extremely prepared before you start the rehearsals? Yeah, but it's not and because I'm prepared, up. but it's because I, I mean, we've been rehearsing yesterday. It's, it's kind of, as a, it, for me, it's so obvious. <laughs> where to stand, where to go, what to yeah, do, where yeah. to sit, how to talk, what to say, in which way. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that my biggest problem is that I um, don't give enough liberty or freedom to the actors. Really? Because what I, like when, when I watch, now I, it looks like improvisation, that you feel very free and re cool to, to move wherever you want. In a, it's a very dynamic and violent blockings you say and so are they now you go a b c no because all of it is is, is like a clock because yeah. when it yeah. turns yeah. everything has to yeah, be yeah. precisely blocked because mm -hmm. otherwise they would not be here when when the stage is turned <laughs> or they have to be on the other side yeah. so it's meant to be that they are not here so all of this is completely constructed mm -hmm. of so it's like in the beginning we have the, the text the blockings <laughs> and um, the cassette, how to say the lines. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so it's, it's just, usually it's, it's a week, you know. It's just preparation and then you just follow the instructions. Okay. <laughs> so it's a little bit like Bergman is working. <laughs> like you feel like you, 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 and in the end you think you came up with everything yourself. No, no, but <laughs> Last, put it that way, I suppose, because of course, a lot, I, it's not that I, I know it before, but it's, we start to, to play mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. and then, out of this, mm -hmm. what, what's happening, mm -hmm. I do construct it. Mm -hmm. So you don't construct the, the blockings ahead? <coughs> Never. No, no, okay. Because it's interesting with some, some directors that you never get blockings, you have to improvise. And some you have extremely precise blockings, like Bergman always worked like that. And then after two weeks, he got sick because he was so bored looking at us when we were trying to just go into this. But but and how? No, the, then we started the work. So this was kind of the introduction, first two weeks. But how 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 is it? If I ask the actors, for you to to start working with now, you have all the three been from the start in this play. Where, where, 
What did she must have showered now? I miss I miss her. Just to to tell you, yeah. she's not she cannot speak English. Yeah, but that's why we have a translator. I okay. Mm. But maybe that's why she's a bit shy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But but still, how is it when when you start uh, working on this? Do you have anything? Can you tell us a little bit about it? The, the, the work with this play, the rehearsals? Yeah, the only thing I remember, for example, is that we were talking a lot how to, how is it when you, when you have guests? You know, how, how do you behave, for example, like? In the beginning, you know, we were after after three minutes. Everybody was sitting, you know, because it's very comfortable. And then Thomas said, "Yeah, do you really think that it happens so fast that people sit down, or is it more that they stand around? They don't know um, how to how to behave, and this kind of moments where you don't know what to do. And there are some pauses which are um, set up." Which, which, which are like, okay, now what, what we should do, you know, and this is also when she asked, uh, what do we do now, so communication. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was something we were talking about, and I think, for example, in the first part where, where it's just about Frank and Katharina, um, it's a bit difficult, you know, to invent this kind of play they, 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 yeah. they are playing, because when we started, we were just fighting from the beginning on, you know, very aggressive, and, very, and, and then you realize that this kind of fights in relationships are much more complex and much more playful, you know, the, the, the ways, the way you are fighting. It's not that you are always arguing on the first level of communication, you know, sometimes you say something and you mean the opposite, or like you were talking about, what is the name, double double bind, and, mm -hmm. Uh, that was something we were work, working on, and yeah. Because there's um, as when it starts, as from the other couple. Oh yes, yeah, she should cheers. <laughs> Somebody knows better ashes than we have. <laughs> Tell us, because it's really painful to, for the actress. It's not very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can you're use afraid it. of the yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, because uh, in the in the opening when the other couple comes, it's it's really that you uh, make everybody stand so long. It's very rude and it's very you can you feel really pain as the audience is like, oh my god. For a couple coming here, it's, uh, it's like you, you you suffer with them. It's a, so that was uh, your sadistic uh, side. No, it's, a, <laughs> it's pure realism. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's the, that's my only uh, parameter of work that I try to be as close to what's happening. Uh, in, in my view, I'm not saying that it's true, but it's my view on how it is when you are invited. And um, I mean, this is, it's a strange invitation. They should not have guests. No. These two. Um, <laughs> and um, out of out of a, a kind of a desperate situation in their relationship. And she's saying, I can't have another night with you. They, they decide to have these two guests. And uh, of course, it already makes it very tense and awkward for, for the others uh, to come. 
And also these two, they should not go when they're invited, they should stay home. <laughs> because their relationship is also pretty... What I find, I mean, I'm, I always enjoy a lot watching my shows, what I really loved tonight was that Actually, they have a mirror-like situation, yeah. you know, he's very dominant in their relationship, the man, but she's very dominant in this <clears throat> relationship, the woman. So that's what I really like. It's not about women are like this, men are like this. It's about the uh, human beings. It's, uh, there's no... I, I wouldn't dare say that there's any gender uh, difference. Everybody can be dominant and sadistic and humiliating and it's nothing to do with men. Yeah, that's true. Of course, and also how, how very quick in an evening the surface is falling for, for, for both couples in front of each other also. That, that's the... Um, yeah. Yeah, they can have each other as psychologists, right? They can continue this. Um, but um, also what I... I you were also from the beginning, yes, working with a player. How, how, can you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> what do you want to know? Yeah, the, 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 the process of rehearsing, how, how you uh, come to the, the yeah, what, what, what was happening? Hmm. Yeah, at the beginning, we talked a lot of um, uh, when, when you, when both couples um, meeting each other and um, how you can fight with your husband maybe, but um, in front of other guys, mm -hmm. yes, so it's not so directly, it's really more, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, excuse me, my English is not so good. Yeah, yeah, in front right. of you all because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's hard. You think that. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I can talk a little bit in German. Yeah, yeah, please, and second translate. Yeah. And Thomas Becker. And Thomas Becker, yeah. Ja, also es war einfach wichtig, nochmal zu gucken, wie man den anderen sozusagen treffen kann, ohne dass die anderen es gleich merken. Also. So it's about hitting the other one without them realizing that you kind of hit, it, yeah. hit your partner. Ja. Und auch wie man auch in, in Partnerschaften tatsächlich den Partner bevormundet, eigentlich ständig, ohne dass man es möchte. Darüber haben wir, glaube ich, auch sehr viel gesprochen. Das war für mich auch immer eine richtige Erkenntnis. Das hat nochmal so eine, eine Beobachtung auf mich selber, aber auch auf andere Menschen geschärft. Now, how you dominate your partner without meaning it. Also wenn Jenna zum Beispiel sagt, oh, das ist immer so phlegmatisch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's so phlegmatic. Actually, it's like beating him, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like in front of the others. But if you say, oh, he's so pragmatic, then it's really, has another pace. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very, I, I, I welcome here after the shower. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> also, maybe you can translate the question. Yes. Uh, also, you, I know you have been, uh, not rehearsing, you have done, she's the heroine of tonight. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, she, she jumped in later on in the play, right? But you have been playing for a while still. And, and um, can you talk a little bit about your character and, and um, uh, the <coughs> courageous way of being on stage, uh, from my point of view? Also, yeah, ich habe irgendwann am Haus erfahren, dass die Rolle äh, umgesetzt werden muss aus zeitlichen Gründen. War so mutig und habe gesagt, ich möchte das spielen. Hatte zu dem Zeitpunkt die Premiere schon gesehen. But at a certain point she was offered this role because the other actress couldn't uh, do it out of uh, time reasons and she saw the premiere. Und ich hatte auch mit Thomas nach der Premiere gesprochen und fragte mich, wie she ich das finde. To me after the premiere but, and I was asking her how she und ich war ziemlich entrüstet und habe gesagt, ja, also so eine Leute da unten mit den Kindern, die kenne ich, aber so eine da oben. Ja. She said she knows the couple with the children, but she doesn't know this couple on the uh, second floor, uh, Katharina and uh, Frank. 
Und dann bekam ich das Textbuch nach Hause, ähm, hatte so ungefähr drei Wochen Zeit. Und sie hat das Buch mit dem Text und sie hat drei Wochen Zeit. Und musste also beim Lesen des Textes bemerken, ich habe da irgendetwas an dem Abend nicht gesehen, weil. Und while reading it, I found out that uh, something I haven't realized during uh, I saw the show. Also ich konnte mich wirklich, ich, ich habe dieses, dieses Pärchen so ausgeklammert, die haben für mich nicht stattgefunden, so dass ich also mich so über diese Texte gewundert habe. Also als hätte ich würde ich sie wirklich zum ersten Mal erfahren. Kind of forgot that the other couple, the, the main couple, and um, as if I hadn't seen the show or this part of the show. Und es kam dann eben zum Vorschein, dass ähm, ich mich zu dem Zeitpunkt in so einer Beziehung gefunden habe. <lacht> And she kind of uh, found out that she lived in such a relationship during she was trying to learn the text. Oh, ja, ja. <lacht> ja das äh, war dann der Grund, warum ich das wahrscheinlich so verdrängt habe. Und insofern musste ich dann gar nicht viel spielen. <lacht> maybe, maybe that was the reason for why I couldn't realize it when I saw it, and so I maybe didn't have to play so much. <laughs> no, it was a hard time for me. I had two and a half weeks to take this to take this figure to take this with the DVD. I had also written, she comes from the right, she takes the cigarette, she takes the film, 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 she so she was uh, doing all this uh, at home in an empty room with a DVD and a television and uh, uh, there she comes in and she takes a cigarette and she uh, sits down and she goes into the other room, says a line, comes back you know, and uh, she decided because she had only had 10 days to have um, 10, uh, no one week to have 10 uh, pages a day. Um, but this is the way everybody of us works. What Thomas was talking about. <laughs> right. But you know, to jump in after after the rehearsal like that, it's a, it's a nightmare for every actor. Yeah. Of course. It truly is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what, what, I, I just want to know, from Lars Norén, how, how um, and also, uh, I, I've been, I've been in Berlin and watched theater in Frankfurt, and, uh, um, and every time I've been in Germany, it's like um, the audience, uh, or you are very keen uh, or interested in, in doing a, a contemporary at the time, even classics, you do it very modern and very, um, experimentalistic. Is that the right word? Um, <laughs> yeah, but you experiment a lot more. I, as I uh, see the, the German theater compared to, to Sweden, and also that the, the audience is so um, alert and they know so much about theater and they seem to go to the theater so much. Does that um, reflect on your the way you work with theater, well, strange question, but you, you, you understand what I mean? Is, could well, that be I'm, that first of all, I'm not taking this uh, compliment to the German audience because I want to make a compliment to this audience tonight because um, they were, uh, or you were, reacting uh, actually in the same way or even more on the play on every and and it was in German and you had to read the subtitle yeah. and it very it was very much communicating mm -hmm. and this is not always the case uh, when you perform in Germany so our experience is more or my experience is more that most of the countries we go uh, we have a better reception than in Germany. Yeah, but we do audience. also have yes, that have when that we go it. abroad. Yes. That's what it is to work. That's why it's That's so why nice go. to go on tour. <laughs> because it's like you see True. something, you new actors that yeah. you never saw before. You, you, have, you have this uh, first falling in love 
uh, thing. So but it's I, like when you talk to a woman you don't know or with your wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how it is. It's love at first sight. But I mean, like, when uh, um, do you have a lot of communication with your audience? Do you have these talks that we had, that where we went for guest place, that you, you have some talk, like, next day? Or? We stopped communicating. You stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old relationship. We are in divorce. <laughs> no, um, it's Berlin is a pretty uh, difficult city yeah. for theatre because um, there are so many theatres and. Um, German audiences, especially Berlin audience, tends to believe that they've seen everything. And They're that, spoiled. And that, yeah, and that they are the capital of theater. A bit like London, maybe. But other kind of theater, not. You cannot, yeah, but that is. So it's another kind of That's uh, another theater. story. Yeah, it's yeah. Another, another thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, it's pretty tough, I would say, to, yeah. to, to kind of. And, and we, I found out uh, that what is really important is what you want to talk about and not so much um, listen to what they want to see or to hear. Oh, th th that's not what I meant. That no, no, sure, but sometimes it happens when you have audience talk or meeting that you kind of approach them too much, that you kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's like... Yeah, yeah. I. I'm, I'm, I'm myself a professional spectator, mm -hmm. so, and I started as a spectator doing theatre. So, what I'm interested in is that somebody has to tell something. Mm -hmm. That's all, nothing else. But as soon as I found out, oh, this director wants to seduce me, to like something, to, to enjoy or so on, I, I stop. Yeah. No. That, then you you turned off. Yeah. yeah. I understand. But um, but I, it seems like people tend to go so much to the theater in Germany that no. they have. I, I, no. 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 Oh. No. Uh, let me still believe that. <laughs> <laughs> As we have. Yeah. Because I experienced when we were in Berlin that people that we, we were there once a long time ago with Per Gint, as I told you, and they saw ten other. Uh, versions of Per Gint and they could talk about the play just as well as us that's been working with it. So. Yeah, because it's always the same people. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I think it's, when, when you have something which is successful, sometimes you are really surprised about the potential of quantity of people, mm -hmm. you know? We, we, we played uh, Nora for 250 times and it was always sold out and there are more and more, more and more people than we played Hamlet now for 150 times. So I think there's a big interest if something is good, you yeah. know. If it's not good, people are not coming and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, uh, maybe I understood your question wrong, but my experience is when we travel around and the reactions of the people, you know, the, I get a lot of mails over Facebook, you know, okay, Facebook's maybe not... My wife doesn't like Facebook. <laughs> I'm more talking with my Facebook friends sometimes than with my wife. <laughs> but, uh, Talk to her on Facebook. Yeah, she's... <laughs> she's, 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 she's edit, edit me. Um, <laughs> friends of me. No, but but um, what my experience is that with Hamlet, for example, or also with Stevens, I got a, I got a very, very long mail of a guy who saw it um, somewhere in France, I think. And they, what they described is that they saw something of themselves, you know, that they um, find themselves in the performance. And that, that really changed their life because they have the opportunity to, to watch on it, you know, out of distance. Mm -hmm. And this is something, I was not so sure if theater can still do this, you know, or, or, or if it's just stupid entertainment. Or, but 
because of all these feedbacks, also from Hamlet, people from Turkey writing me how this changed their life, you know, that, that makes me so happy and so proud and so optimistic that theater is in this um, way very, um, very um, politic, you know, yeah. because it's changing society and that the people are so open to change after they saw something. And that, that is very interesting for you because you you really and this is the big adventure of Facebook, you you, you cannot talk to the people or this is also the reason why I like panel talks, okay, or when people ask questions and everything. Because then you understand that that, it, um, that there is a reaction on it. So that it's not just they go home and 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 they forget it. And sometimes I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not so happy when people say they saw something and they understood that the world is wrong. You know? It's always good when they saw something and they say, I'm wrong, I'm bad. You know, if they see themselves in what we have Yeah, that's what, isn't that the word, all good art is doing yeah. when you're very sincere about it. And but, uh, also, I know you, I saw you on the, the, the website on Lamotte and where you were here last time, and um, are you also thinking about very uh, contemporary and political when you choose your place and why you want to do how you want to do them? Is it is it you have a lot of uh, do you have a discussion with your closest uh, set designer and yourself <laughs> about this? How how do you? Yeah, but it's very difficult because. Um, this, I think the most important is what I said before, that you are sincere and honest to yourself. You know? So when you, when you kind of understand what, what's right or wrong, then um, it, it's, it's like Woody Allen put it, he said, uh, you can if you have a message, write a letter. Uh, so, and I do <coughs> really believe in that because most of the time when you kind of, I'm, I'm actually working on a, on a play who has the problem of knowing what, who's right and who's wrong. It's The Enemy of the People by Ibsen. Um, but I, I more appreciate when you kind of meet in a rehearsal room to find out how maybe people <coughs> communicate, behave, how maybe this is the right reading of the situation. And it, it has to do a lot with, with, with the actors um, also proposing and giving certain views on the situation and the play and the character. And so it's more uh, like a group of people meeting and trying to find out things and not coming and knowing uh, what to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's always our <coughs> process. Uh, if it's going to be fun to work, otherwise we get so bored. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, still, it's, it's the, the choice of plays, the, 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 the way you... Well, to be honest, Shoot. at the moment, I have more the problem. Uh, I have kind of <coughs> eight to ten plays which I would like to do now, immediately. <laughs> so I'm only waiting for the constellation of actors. That's all. So, you mean, you, is it like you think that, okay, now you have these actors, then you can do that play? Yes. Because it's out of the actors yes. that you choose the play? Yes. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice, <laughs> of course. But now I would just, uh, as you have all been seeing the play tonight and uh, sitting here what, uh, listening, so maybe the, also the audience, if you have some questions you want to put, please feel free. Yes. <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations to everyone for some beautiful, beautiful work. Um, there's a certain poetry in this production, I think, that is not at all evident 
if you just read the various texts by itself, and you kind of impose, maybe I was just misreading it, but I, I just read it really carefully this morning, so it was very clear in my mind. Poor oh, cool guy, you read it this morning and it's all in Yeah, well, <laughs> of course my German isn't very good. Um, and, and there's, like I said, there was a poetry uh, to it that, that I just wasn't at all obvious to me when I read it. So that, that's beautiful. Uh, congratulations. Um, my question is this for Tomas. Um, I, if I understand it correctly, in the past you've been very interested in, uh, amongst others, uh, Sarah Kane and Mark Ravenhill. And it's really interesting to compare the Norayan universe with the Kane universe and with the Ravenhill. Uh, universe, they certainly have certain things in common, and yet in other ways they're very different. Mm -hmm. uh, could you talk about how the Norian, what that Norian universe is for you, and how it compares and contrasts with those others? Well, first of all, um, what is for me very important talking about Norian is that he started with these kind of plays, which we saw tonight, and then in the early 90s had this change and decided to leave family and to go out into the street and to talk about other issues than psychological issues, problems with your mother, problems with your father, alcoholism, uh, therapy, and so on. So he, he, he fled uh, the bourgeois hell. Um, and so there's this kind of two uh, periods of his writing, and maybe now even a third one, which is pretty close to Sarah Kane, or even more close than the early ones, which is death, writing about death. Um, and uh, what, like when you hear like Todesvariation, or, uh, or um, which, where he goes very close to Jon Fosse also. And uh, uh, Sarah Kane with psychosis, uh, there's a lot of um, parallels. <coughs> mm, then I would say, of course, there are uh, similarities, but Ravenhill, he's more a farcical writer. He's much more um, putting types on stage and, and not so much characters. But it has also a, a very strong power. Raven is much more influenced by pop culture. Uh, it's very important for him. And medias and Hollywood and all this ming mingling this up. Um, which is not so important for Lars Morin and for Sarah Kane. Um, but I mean this is a long, this is a whole, a very long conversation. <laughs> um, <coughs> What is, what is, what is uh, true for sure and very important is Sarah wrote for seven years, uh, Lars nearly for 17. So this is pretty, so she had to put in all her plays in this very few time. And she jumped in her way of writing from one level to another, from play to play. She took like three steps, whilst other writers kind of write ten plays, she only wrote one and passed on to the next level. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's a real long, I don't know, but it may be boring for the rest to listen to this. Yeah, and maybe we'll talk about this later. Yeah. Anyone else has any more questions? Yes, they do. They, they do, but they don't. You just don't want to come out with them. Yes, please. Hi, right, thank you for that performance. Um, I was just wondering, so, I mean, the play obviously balances the line between tragedy and comedy. And, um, I mean, sometimes it's intentionally funny, and other times people just laugh because it's so uncomfortable. But so, what type of receptions do you get with different audiences to this? And also, as an actor, how do you respond to that? Do you, do you ever think, wow, that's really not funny, and it feels strange that people laugh at places where they should No, never. And on the other hand, or is it just, is it just a nice and feel the reception that it's having an impact? No. Uh, what's really happening is that 
I was sitting up there and I had some moments of laughter tonight myself, but nobody else was laughing. <laughs> I had too. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, uh, I don't know if you know this probably, or I have this experience when I watch movies a lot, you know, the whole cinema is screaming of, of laughter. And then in, at a certain moment where it becomes very tragic, I'm laughing. So uh, it's very different kind of, of, of humor. So I don't care when they laugh. I, I do really care about that they feel at ease, you know? And when you, when you, you have to feel at ease to start laughing. And or you don't feel at ease at all and to go over this you laugh. So, but, but I think humor is a very fragile and very delicate uh, thing and very difficult to grasp. I'm even not sure when the whole theater is laughing that it's really funny, that it's really humor. I think the, the deep humor is without laughter. Um, so it's a, it's a Freud that wrote a lot about uh, the laughter. And <laughs> generations of uh, psychoanalysts try to find out what it is and we still don't really know what it is. But I know for sure that in my work it's very important that the actors do play the situation in a very, very um, uh, truthful and tragic way. And never fall out of the situation of the drama. But this is also like common uh, known Everybody knows it when doing theater. I was pretty proud of these guys tonight when uh, he did the telephone uh, because there was a telephone in the audience. And I was very proud of them that they didn't laugh. That laugh just went and said, hello, nothing. And I can imagine a lot of actors like... And, but they, and this is, I think, very, very tough when they really know, okay, we can do this, but the laughter is there, it's not with us, it's down there. And, and I'm always working on um, the precise tragic of the situation. So, and, but as you know, when, when, you, when, when, when somebody on stage is terribly in a mess and doesn't know how to, how to solve it, and suffering, then it becomes funny, very funny. And that's why I think, because tonight there was laughter, and um, I, I, you said when you were asking, I think you were saying, um, of course the play is funny, but I think I can imagine a lot of production where there's no laughter, you know? But the laughter here is not because we want to be funny, I hope. The laughter is because you saw things which make you, oh, no, it's not possible. It's because you recognize something. And it, it's, it's more this laughter, oh, please, it's not true. And this laughter I like a lot. And it can come on different occasions every night, too, I guess, for you. Mm. But as for the actors, I, I understand, I can not, do you feel that, that it, Sometimes laughter in the wrong place. I know we're going to have to stop now. They're doing like this long time ago. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> we can, we can I'm sorry. go on with the discussion in the bar. Yeah, we, yes, we have to go to the bar. Uh, but, um, but you can feel all, uh, very free and comfortable in this place. Yes. As, as, uh... No, there's no wrong laugh. No, no, no. no. I mean, that was the question, right? Is it, are you Sometimes on it's hard when the audience is laughing and, you're, and you as an actress has to, you are in a really heavy situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's hard, mm -hmm. but it's really okay. Every laughing, is, mm -hmm. every reaction is, is good, mm -hmm. all right, of course. Okay, let's have a drink. <laughs>